Hey guys, welcome back to Geometry. Today we're going to take another look at algebraic proofs. Now, proofs are something that we're going to do a whole lot of this year. Proofs are something that I think give us, they have a whole lot of benefits for us because they force us to think about things in a very specific cause and effect kind of way. Um, so you may not have to do a proof for your job, but you're going to have to think about the cause and effect relationships of everything that you'll do within whatever job that you ha may have. So, uh, proofs when we're talking about geometric things can be kind of difficult to do. So we're going to focus, for now, we're going to start on how to prove things um, using algebra algebraic equations. Because we already know how to solve an algebraic equation. But what we're going to do is look at solving an algebraic equation as a proof. So we're going to start with the given as our statement and our reason. Now what I mean by that is every single proof is going to have two columns. Okay, One column is going to be statements and the other is going to be our reasons. Now we're going to be given something, okay, and that's going to be our first statement, and our first reason is always going to be that it's given. We're going to have some statements along the way. We're going to have some reasons along the way, but we're going to be asked to prove that something is true. Let's say maybe x equals 3. Okay, We always need to end exactly on x equals 3, and we need to have a property that justifies it. Now, given will always be our very first reason, but prove will never, ever, ever be any reason that we use. We do need to end exactly on what we are asked to prove. So say we're asked to prove x equals 3, and we finish up with 3 equals x, we need one more step to have x equals 3. We're only ever going to combine statements that have the same reason, which means we move one little step at a time, and we are going to justify every single step that we make. Okay? Every time little change needs a justification, it needs a property, a theorem, something that says that it's okay to do that. Um, what students have trouble with is they look at the statement that they're on, and they look for a property that looks like that statement. But what you really want to focus on is how that statement is different from the previous statement. You want to focus on what has changed from the previous statement. So what we need to do right now is take a look at the properties that we have and see how we can use those to prove things. So we have this thing called the reflexive property. And the reflexive property says A equals A, which means that something is equal to itself. Now that seems kind of silly to say something's equal to itself. And in an algebraic proof, it kind of is. It doesn't help us a whole lot. But we are going to get into some geometric proofs, okay? And at some point, we'll be given a diagram like this. And we'll be asked to prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, meaning everything about those two triangles is identical. Well, what's going to be very helpful for us to prove that is that those two triangles share this side. So we could argue and say, well, they share that side, so that side's common, so obviously from the diagram, that side's congruent. But we need a property that backs it up. I need to be able to say that segment AC on that pink triangle is the same as segment AC on that blue triangle. Well, guys, that's the uh, reflexive property. Something is congruent or equal to itself. So right now with the algebraic proofs, it's not going to be all that helpful, but when we get into our geometric proofs, that's going to be a big deal. Okay, now, like I said, we really want to focus on what's different from one step to the next. So each of these properties has an if-then statement. Remember what follows if is our hypothesis, what follows then is our conclusion. Take a look at how this changes from hypothesis to conclusion. A equals B to B equals A. We're flipping it. We're flipping the equation over the equal sign. And that's what the symmetric property says we can do. The transitive property says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So we look at how this is changing from hypothesis to conclusion. And what's happening is we're going from two equations, both of which have B, to one equation without B. So what's happening here is we're taking two values that are equal to the same third value, and we're saying that they are equal to each other. Hopefully we're going to spell equal correctly. E-Q-U-A-L. Okay? 
Next up, we have the addition and subtraction properties of equality. And we also have the multiplication and division properties of equality. Now, all four of these properties pretty much say the same thing. Take a look at our initial statement. They both have the same if, a, b. Okay? But then I have a, b, ooh, it's too dark to see. a plus c equals b plus c. a minus c equals b minus c. a times c equals b times c. And a divided by c equals b divided by c. Excuse me, as long as c does not equal zero. All of these say pretty much the same thing. We can do the same arithmetic operation to both sides of an equation, but never divide by zero. So I can add C to both sides. I can subtract C from both sides. I can multiply both sides by C. I can divide both sides by C. Guys, that's what we've been doing in algebra since sixth or seventh grade. Okay? But now we have a property to back it up. And we're going to need that property for every step that we make. Next up, we have the substitution property. And the substitution property says if A equals B, then A can be used instead of B. Okay? What we're doing here is we're going to replace a piece of an equation with an equivalent value. Now, someone there is saying, well, that sounds a whole lot like the transitive property. And you're not wrong. The transitive property and the substitution property are very similar. But there is a key difference. The substitution property allows us to replace a little part of an equation with an equivalent part. So right here in this first example, I have a plus b equals c, and I have that b equals d. Now what I'm going to do is take d and put it in place of b. Okay? Since they're equal to one another, one can replace the other. And I'm only replacing this little piece of that equation. We solved systems of linear equations where we got a variable all by itself, Okay? And then we put that value in place of that, value, that variable in the other equation. We're changing a little piece of the equation. Now, the transitive property, on the other hand, we're replacing an entire side of an equation with an equivalent side of another equation. So here, I have a plus b in both of these equations. And a plus b is equal to c, and a plus b is equal to d. Since they're both, or excuse me, since C and D are both equal to the same thing, C and D have to be equal to each other. Take a look at this one. I have 3x plus 2y equals 7, and 9x minus 4 equals 7. Since these are both equal to 7, they have to be equal to one another. Okay? That's the difference between the transitive and the substitution. Substitution says replace a little piece. Transitive property says if two things are equal to the same thing, they're equal to one another. We're replacing an entire side of an equation. Okay, then lastly, we have the substitution property, and I think we've been using the substitution property for a very long time, so we should be pretty comfortable with that. What we're doing is we're multiplying every term in the quantity by the coefficient outside the quantity. But something that's also important to note is the distributive property also says that if there's a common factor, you can rewrite it by bringing out that GCF. So, the distributive property works in both directions, and that's important to keep in mind. Sometimes you're bringing out a GCF, sometimes you're distributing that factor. Okay? Either way, that's the distributive property at play. So, let's take a look at some of these proofs. Okay, let's start with this. Now, all these reasons are here. We just need to talk about what each one of them is. So, I am given, and I guess we should have that here. Let's say we are given that 2 times the quantity, 2r plus 5 plus 1, equals 5 minus 2 times the quantity, 3, or 3 minus r. And we want to prove that r equals negative 6. Well, we know that we need to start with the given statement. It has to be our first statement and it also has to be our first reason. Okay? Then we want to consider how we're getting from one line to the next. So what changes from line 1 to line 2? Well, from line 1 to line 2, I'm multiplying through that 2 and that negative 2. I'm getting rid of those parentheses. And the property that says that we can do that is the distributive property. 
Okay, then from line two to line three, what's changing here? Well, I'm taking this 10 plus one and I'm replacing it with 11 and I'm taking this five minus six and I'm replacing it with negative one. I'm replacing pieces of the equation. The property that says that we can replace pieces of equations is the substitution property. From line three to line four, what's changing here? Well, what's changing is that they're subtracting 2r from both sides. Okay, that 2r suddenly shows up. The property that says that we can subtract the same thing from both sides is the subtraction property of equality. Okay, next up, look at what's changing from line 4 to line 5. 4r minus 2r is being replaced with 2r. 2r minus 2r disappears. Well, here's the catch, though. It doesn't exactly disappear. 2r minus 2r is 0, and negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. So we're taking pieces of the equation and replacing them with equivalent values. That's the substitution property again. Okay, next up, take a look at how we're changing from line 5 to line 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, 5 to 6. Okay, what's changing? Well, suddenly there's this minus 11 on both sides. We're subtracting 11 from both sides. The property that says that we can subtract the same thing from both sides is that subtraction property of equality. Okay, then we're changing. 11 minus 11 is 0, and 2r plus 0 is 2r. Negative 1 minus 11 is negative 12. We're replacing pieces. The property that says that we can replace pieces is the substitution property. Okay, then from line, where are we now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. From 7 to 8, what's happening here is we're dividing both sides by 2. And the property that says that we can divide both sides by 2 is the division property of equality. And then finally, we're actually doing those divisions. Okay, we're replacing parts of the equation. And the property that says that we can replace pieces of those equations is the substitution property. So we go one little step at a time. We justify every single step along the way. And we only combine steps if they have the same property. Well, none of these steps have the same property, except I guess we could argue that on these statements where we substituted, we substituted multiple things on each of those lines. Those are places where it's okay to combine. Okay? But we wouldn't want to combine the subtraction property and that substitution property. That could cause problems for us. All right, so now let's take a look at some full proofs. Okay, we already looked at those. So... Here, we are given that 3x plus 7 equals 13, and we want to prove that x equals 2. Well, we know we need to start with that given information. So that's listed, and given is the reason for that as well. Next up, we look at how we are changing from this line to this line. Well, what's showing up is that they are subtracting 7 from both sides. And the property that says we can subtract 7 from both sides is the subtraction property of equality. Now, you'll notice that I am not abbreviating the word subtraction. We can abbreviate property, and we can abbreviate of equality, okay, but putting an equal sign inside parentheses. But we don't want to abbreviate the keywords of those properties because that's what's really going to uh, make it very clear exactly what we're doing. We don't want to be confused about what's happening. Now, next line. From line 2 to 3, what changes? Well, they actually do the subtraction. Okay? They're combining those like terms. And the property that says that we can do that, that we can replace those pieces of the equation, is the subtraction property of equality or simply the subtraction. Oops, sorry. And this is why we don't abbreviate, because it's not subtraction, it's substitution. Okay? The substitution property says that we can replace those pieces. Okay? Now, this is why we don't abbreviate, because subtraction and substitution start out the same way. 
So we want to make it very clear which one of those we're using each time. Now, from line three to line four, what is changing? Well, they're dividing both sides by three. And the property that says that we can divide both sides by three is the division property of equality. Okay, then from line four to line five, they're doing that division. Okay, they're replacing six divided by three with two and three X divided by three with just X. This is the substitution property. Okay, and we've proved what we set out to prove, so we can say Q, E, B. Okay, next up. Okay, and whoever set this up forgot to list all of our given and our prove statements. So given t minus 6 divided by 7 equals 8, and we want to prove that t equals 62. All right, so we know that our very first statement has to be the given, and we know that its reason has to be that it was given. Then we want to look at how we are changing between each line. Well, from line one to line two, take a close look at what's happening. There's these seven. These seven show up, and there's a big set of parentheses on the left side. Well, really, all they're doing is they're multiplying both sides of the equation by seven. And the property that says that we can multiply both sides by seven is the multiplication property of equality. Okay, then we look at what happens from line two to line three. And the change from line two to line three is that those sevens cancel, and seven times eight is replaced with 56. So they're actually doing the multiplication and replacing, okay, replacing the multiplication with the product of that multiplication. That's substitution. Okay, replacing one piece with an equivalent piece. Okay, then we look at how statement three is changing into statement four. And what's happening is I see this plus six on both sides. So they're adding six to both sides. The property that says that we can add six to both sides is the addition property of equality. And then finally, I'm simplifying. Okay, I'm replacing this big long expression with a shorter equivalent expression on both sides. Okay, and the property that says that we can replace those pieces is the substitution property. Okay, and we prove what we set out to prove. So we can say that which is expected is shown. All right, moving right along. Okay, number three here. We are given that 3x minus 5, excuse me, 3 times the quantity, x minus 5, is equal to negative 6. And we are asked to prove that x equals 3. So we start out with the given as our statement and reason. And then we want to ask ourselves how we got from line 1 to line 2. Well, the, the difference is those parentheses are gone. The way we got rid of those parentheses was by distributing that 3. The property that says that we can do that is the distributive property. Okay, the distributive property says we can either multiply by that coefficient or we can bring out a GCF. Then we look at how we change from line 2 to line 3. Okay, and what's changing from line 2 to line 3 is suddenly I see these 15 being added to both sides. And the property that says that we can add the same thing to both sides is the addition property of inequality. Okay, then they start replacing some stuff. Okay, negative 15 plus 15 is 0, and 3x plus 0 is just 3x. Negative 6 plus 15 is 9. They're replacing those pieces. That's the substitution property.
Okay, then we look at the next one. To go from 3x equals 9 to 3x over x equals 9 over 3. And what's happening here, guys, is they're dividing both sides of this equation by 3. And the property that says that we can divide both sides by 3 is that division property of equality. Okay, then we have x equals 3. Okay, and how did we get from here to here? Well, we replaced stuff. Okay, we replaced 3x divided by 3 with x, and we replaced 9 divided by 3 with 3. Okay, that's the substitution property. And that which is expected is shown. All right, now, last one. Oh, this one looks crazy. There's no numbers. It's all variables. But guys, guess what? That doesn't change anything that we're going to do. We're always going to start out with our given information and given as our reason. We're always going to end on what we are being asked to prove. Okay, and we're going to look at each step along the way. Now, ask yourself, not what does this statement look like. Ask what changed from the previous statement. So what changed from line one to line two? Okay, well, there's that big set of parentheses, and now there's a C on both sides. They multiplied both sides by C. The property that says that we can multiply both sides by C is the multiplication property of equality. Okay, then, what changes from line 2 to line 3? Well, the parentheses are gone, and these Cs are gone as well. Well, they're not gone because what happened is we did that multiplication. Okay, dividing this by C and then multiplying the whole thing by C, those are inverse operations. They're going to cancel. Okay, and C times D is just written as CD. Okay, all we did here, guys, is we substituted. We replaced pieces. Okay, then from line 3 to line 4, what changed? Well, suddenly I've got this extra Y on each side. Okay, we subtracted Y from each side. And the property that says that we can subtract Y from both sides is the substitution property. Of, well, let me try that again. Subtraction property of equality. Okay, and then what changes from line 5 to line 6 is we combined our like terms. Okay, we replaced pieces. Now, on the right side, we didn't really change anything. Okay, nothing changed at all. On the left side, we replaced a piece of that equation. Okay, the y minus y got replaced with 0, and x plus 0 got replaced with just x. Okay, so this is the substitution property. Okay, we're replacing pieces of the equation with equivalent pieces of the equation. And we prove what we set out to prove, so we can say QED. So each of these proofs, we're starting with the given, ending exactly on what we are asked to prove. One little statement at a time, justify every single statement, and only combine statements if they have the same property as their justification. Okay? Now, when we're trying to determine which property is used, focus on what is changing from your hypothesis to your conclusion. So for each of these, we want to identify the property that's used. Okay? So we start with t equals y and y equals k, and we go to y equals, or excuse me, t equals k. So what's changing here is we're going from these two equations, y, t and k, both being equal to y, and now saying that they're equal to each other. That's the transitive property. Okay, on number six, I start with 2x plus 4 equals 12, 
and I go to 2x plus 4 minus 4 equals 12 minus 4. Okay? What's changing from the hypothesis to the conclusion? They're subtracting 4 from both sides. The property that says that we can make that change is the subtraction property of equality. Okay, from line, excuse me, on line 7, what's changing from our hypothesis to our conclusion? Okay, what's changing from here to here? Well, they're taking that 5 and multiplying it by each of those terms. 5 times 2x gives me 10x. 5 times minus 4 gives me minus 20. The property that says that we can do that is the distributive property. And then finally, this last one we have here, if 12, x, 12 equals 3x plus 6, then 3x plus 6 equals 12. What is changing from our hypothesis to our conclusion? What's happening is they're flipping it. The property that says that we can flip it over the equal sign is the symmetric property. Okay? So, always start with the given, always end on the proof. Justify every single step along the way with one property. If you have to use multiple properties, then you need multiple steps. To determine what property is justifying that step, focus not just on what that line says, but on how that line is different from previous lines.